I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays. Way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time. I thought I would never be fine. I strive just to say I'm alright. And for the first time in a long time, I'm alright. I've seen a lot of change. How's everybody doing? So I just want to show a small sample of what operations are going to possibly look like down the road on River Road. And the reason why I say that is because I like to finish the layout. Like I, like I think operations are cool, but it's not a priority to me. Like I've often said this before, like, you know, people have mentioned, you know, maybe in contrast to the shelf layout, opposed to the, oh, I got a really big layout or whatever. That's sort of a funny phrase to me because oftentimes people will say, well, I don't have enough room to build a layout. But really what they're saying is, is they don't have enough room to go in circles, like a really big circle. And, you know, without getting into all the semantics of that, like there is no excuse to model a railroad if you understand it more than just, you know, going around in circles, right? For me, the model railroad is about how I view the railroad and how I understand it or have come to understand it later on in life. Um, I don't want a big layout. Even if I had the resources and the money, I wouldn't bother because I'm just not interested because first of all, you want the layout to be finished and it'll never get finished by the time you've already used it up. You've already run it around in circles in a mundane way, you know, 180 times or something or a thousand times and it's just you never finish the railroad because you're just done with it you're done with running the train like there's no depth to it there's no it's just this idea like you should just run trains in circles and just build a plywood pacific and just be done with it like don't like don't bother like don't bother modeling a railroad because you're not ready to model one right and the reason why i say that is because Maybe it's because we're in this sort of consumer culture where we just want everything right now, right? And it just doesn't work that way. Like, I don't think it matters. Like, you could build a railroad that's, you know, 12 feet long, 16 feet long, you know, highly detailed, you know, one or two locations. And you can literally operate on the thing for years to come. It depends on your philosophy. Like if you want to run in circles or run big trains in a mundane way or whatever, like, like it might not even be mundane. It might be just really cool. But the thing is, is how do you get there? I mean, there are exceptions, right? There's people that have been building model railroads for like 30, 40 years. They have a big layout. They run in circles, but I bet you that's the last thing on their mind because they really do understand that trains just simply do not run in circles. They run from point A to point B. They turn and they go back. So the shelf layout is really just a, a very sort of hyper compressed concept of that. And it involves modeling everything from, yeah, the little boat on the shore to the, to the barge slip, to weathering cars, to custom building a locomotive, like a one knockoff that's, you know, inspired by the actual prototype that you actually see in real life or research through photos. I mean, it might be in history. It might be a railroad that you can't access and that's fine too but there's more to it than just saying i need more space because i got to run in a big circle so i think a lot of people that you know build the shelf layout they understand that and so with operations like i know there's years and progressively as i build it but i don't operate that much but i do test things because i want the track to be flawless i want everything to work and so far it does but I have a ways to go and I haven't even fleshed out or written the story of ops. Although I have the locations. I have the brewery off to the left here. I've got the barge slip for all the bridge traffic that is, you know, existing in the imaginary world that comes on and off the layout. 
I have the transload facility down the far end where Axton Steel is. Then there's Ipex Plastics. There's a small yard in that area. And then there's the other Section 3, which I haven't even built yet. But I know where I'm going with it, which is Grain Ops. And then at the end of that, there's a stub end that goes off into another imaginary world. So, so don't say that you don't have room to build a layout. This is a 10 by 12 room. It's a shelf layout concept meaning that it's built like a shelf like this is not like this isn't hard hard fast construction i can pull this down with ease it's it's almost freestanding with a few cleats on the wall just like a picture frame or a standard shelf it's just built that way that there's more to a shelf layout than just the idea of just a flat surface to lay track on but what i want to do is to show you basically a short sample of an ops that takes about oh i don't know half an hour and I'll just, before I do, I'll just give you an example of what I saw the other day on this railroad. I just happened to be driving by. I had my camera with me and you'll see why I model this way and how I understand operations and the way I like to operate. Because at the end of the day, that's all I need is an hour or even maybe 15 minutes. That's it. Okay. Okay, so this is probably a good point to uh, maybe bring this episode to a close and just talk or close with a couple of things. So the smaller layout, right? The advantages are is you can basically complete scenes and feel like you've accomplished something. You touch every aspect of the model railroad on a smaller footprint. You're not overwhelmed by the endless plywood Pacific that stares you in the face every time you come down there because you had this grandiose vision because maybe you said, well, I really love, well, let's just say the Milwaukee Road. 
Uh, I'm not going to ever build it, uh, the layout about the Milwaukee Road, because I can't do it justice. You can't do any railroad justice anyway, right? Like the ideal uh, footprint does not exist. And let me ask you this. So if you laid the track plan on your plywood benchwork of the Milwaukee Road in a warehouse, would, would anybody be able to walk in and say that's the Milwaukee Road without any scenery? without any rolling stock, they wouldn't know either because the track plan would still have to be compressed. So I, I could have said about SRY rail link, you know, it's a hundred mile long short line. I could have said, oh, I can't do it justice, right? And just went on and lamented about that excuse my whole life. But what I did was, is I built other little layouts. Like for example, I could say, well, that little branch line in Saskatchewan, I just can't do it justice. Yes, I can. <laughs> like, have you tried doing this? Have you tried just building a base, laying track, and ballasting? Like, there's just no excuse. This is the smallest layout I have. So this layout here, in a sort of relevant way, is a big layout compared to that, right? So, you know, um, people, maybe they don't want to. Maybe you never will. Or maybe you have a layout right now, and you're feeling inspired, and you're having fun with it, and that's good. And the next one that you build will be better or bigger, or actually it might be smaller. My layouts have actually gotten smaller over the years. Once I got over that, I got that out of my system, this massive layout. And besides, a lot of people that have large layouts, they either inherited them or they're in their 70s or 80s now. And it's been a club-supported layout. It's been an association supporting. It's been a huge collective effort. So this idea of, well, I can't do the railroad justice, pick a scene, right? I picked like this scene, like I went around this railroad through books and live on location. And I said, I'm going to pick two or three scenes. Unfortunately, you have to delete things. That's just the way it is. And capture the spirit of the railroad, right? That's what you want to do. Because you're never, ever going to have an adequate footprint to build your model railroad. You just have to model and when you begin to dive in and decide, okay, I'm going to model a scene of my favorite railroad first and then see what happens after that. Like there's so much more to do on this layout, but I have a sense of peace about it and contentment that I know that it's doable and I have substance to operate. And as far as I go, I can operate. Like I haven't even built the ferry yet, for example, now in closing. I haven't, like when I do, like I can't imagine how long it's going to take me just to pull and swap three grain cars from Vancouver Island and then distribute them on another day after a hard day's work, uh, basically down to the grain elevator or whatever. It just goes on and on. So don't be sucker punched by the big layout, you know, uh, fantasy, right? If I can't have a big layout, I won't have fun. Well, if you can't have fun now on a small layout, you probably never will. So have fun. Build something like this, right? First, and see if you can even do it. Or you might even enjoy this. You might enjoy this so much, uh, you might change scales. Or you might say, you know what? I just want one spur, one siding. I want to super detail it. I want to do this ratty old run down warehouse with one switcher, even an O scale and three cars or something. And you, you'll have a modeling nirvana, right? So that's why I model on a smaller layout. And that's why I can have all the operations I want. So be encouraged, right? Model railroading offers endless possibilities. Don't limit yourself. Don't fall prey to the you know, the, uh, you know, the deceiving colloquialism of, I don't have enough room to do it justice. Yes, you do. Pick a scene, model it, have fun, and I hope you have a great day as well, okay? Cheers. Back a year ago